Hello friends, thank you for joining me, episode 152 today. Thank you for joining me in this series that I've been doing these last few episodes. I'm Kathy Rhodes, and today we're gonna to think differently about being a servant with a vision. Now, just a reminder, if you haven't tuned in to the uh, previous episodes, and I'm talking about episodes 149, and it'll go through 153 five episodes where we're diving into a book that will help grow your leadership. I call this deep dive, I call it a mastermind. If we were in person, we would get together once a week, we would read a book together and we would discuss the chapter or chapters that we, were, we, we read the previous week. But since, you know, it's a virtual world, right? I'm, I'm just getting creatively different and offering kind of a virtual mastermind. Now, you know, ideally a true virtual mastermind would mean that we, we get together on Zoom once a week to discuss, but, but this just got that other twist to it. So, so I'm going to kind of describe the chapters I'm talking about and then just help you think deeper into the topics, ask you some questions, and I encourage you to take time to answer these questions. Pause the video or the audio and truly find an answer. For these questions. There is a saying or quote out there, many times you hear it from speakers, they say that their, their mission is to help people be the best version of themselves. I hate that quote. <laughs> because what in the world does that mean? Well, I heard something this past weekend, Pastor Stephen Furtick from Elevation Church out in North Carolina, he said, you know, personal development is really a path to self-discovery. It's almost like the precursor to that quote I just shared. This mastermind is personal development. And hopefully by reading this book together, by answering some tougher questions, hopefully it's leading you to some self-discovery. Self-discovery of who you really want to be. Well, that is the best version of you. That's the version that you were created for. So dive in with me. Together we are reading the book, Developing the Leader Within You 2.0 by John Maxwell. Today we're going to talk about chapters seven and eight. So jumping right in, what is chapter seven? Chapter seven is known as the heart of leadership, serving people. Spoiler alert. I have an upcoming episode, it'll probably be 154, episode number 154. I was interviewing one of my friends, Stefan, and I thought we were going to interview him regarding his position in, in the school district, and it turned into servant leadership. This chapter is really the heart of leadership, serving people. You know, the word submission, when I think about the word submission, well, by definition, it means to submit under the authority or power of someone else. Submission is really kind of easy when you agree with the person in authority, right? Well, that's not really submission. <laughs> submission is really, it's true when you submit to someone or something that you don't always prefer or you don't always agree with. Well, I see serving people similar to the word submission. Hmm, how? How do those words come together? Well, you know, it's, it's easy to do when you like who you serve. But it's truly powerful when you serve who or what you don't really like. In this chapter of the book, John Maxwell talks about a few different things. First of all, he talks about the power of serving others. He also talks about eight questions to help you serve people better. You know, one of the questions is called the adding value question. What can I do for people to help them succeed? And then finally, he talks about how to develop the servant within you. So the chapter alone is powerful, uh, but, but let's, let's kind of think differently here. Let's, let's talk a little different about what you're going to read in this chapter. So, so the first question I have for you is, have you ever known a manager, maybe a positional manager, who was not a leader? They were given the title, but they just didn't have the leader qualities. How do you work with them? How do you serve them? If this whole chapter is about 
serving people. How do you serve somebody that's really, really poor at what they do? They're, they're not a born leader. They don't look like they're trying to be a good leader. How do you, how do you do that? And I know there's a lot of right answers to give, right? But this is, this is exhausting when you're really in this. Well, my answer for this, I guess, is I guess I've always, I've always kept the mindset of my job as an employee or as a volunteer on a team or, or whatever, as a spouse, anytime I need to be serving somebody in authority, I need to make them look good. My job is to make them look good. So on those mornings when my husband really uh, offends me, frustrates me, it's not my time to uh, throw my attitude and not make a lunch for him. Not saying that I, I make a lunch every day for him, but, but I do. I try to get things together. I just try to help save him time a little bit, uh, unless I have an attitude toward him. <laughs> Yeah, that, that's not my time. My, time my, my job as a wife isn't to intentionally not do things that maybe are more my strong point. My job is to make him look good, right? We're better together. We're a team. That's not easy when I'm emotionally in the moment. But it's so beneficial. No different than my boss. They hired me to do a certain job. But my job is, is truly to do what they want me to do and, and to make them look good. Be proactive. Get them things I know they'll need for a meeting. Think into things. Give them my ideas, my, my concepts, my processes. That's serving. And, and really, I can do that with anyone. Even if they're not good at what they do. That's still my job. What about you? What, what can you do to serve people that may not be naturally good leaders? How can you show that you're serving within your leadership? Okay, question number two. What can you do for people to help them succeed? Maybe it's your team, maybe it's your boss, maybe it's other coworkers within the company, um, maybe you know, other managers, so peers. What can you do? What can you do to help them succeed? Goes back to serving people, right? So how is it? What is it? Maybe it's a conversation. Maybe it's giving ideas how to be a, a, a different type of leader or how to be a servant leader themselves. But right now, I want, you, I want you to think of all the different people you connect with and just come up with one action item. Maybe one decision you're going to make that, that's going to take you into servant leadership a little bit with the people you connect with. Okay, question number three. What does it look like when a leader serves people. Maybe you don't have a good role model in, in your boss. Maybe you've never had a good role model. Um, maybe you're, you're, you're growing at this, right? You're striving to be better at this. So what does it look like when a leader serves people? Maybe I should have started with this question, right? Well, I have. I have had good leaders. And, and you know, by the way, it's not like the leader is good or bad. We just have moments. <laughs> we have moments where we better, might be better at serving people. But when I see good servant, servant leadership, there's, there's transparency, uh, maybe uh, you know, honesty and, and sharing things, not keeping secrets. That's what I mean by transparency. But I think the biggest attribute is humility. And with humility comes apologizing. It comes truly seeing things differently, maybe trying to see things from your team member's eyes. You, you may not agree with it. You may not have seen it yourself, but that's what humility is. That's truly a servant leader, trying to serve the people that report to you. It's not about making them see it your way. It's not about them serving you. It's not about them Honoring you and giving to you, that, that's not servant leadership. Servant leadership is humbling ourselves. Humbling ourselves so that we create stronger teams. So that we truly are leaders that can be trusted. Deep topic. Deep chapter. But so good and so powerful when we can truly embrace it. 
Okay, let's, let's move on. Chapter 8. Chapter 8 is the indispensable quality of leadership. Vision. John's example, John gives an example within, within his writings of, of a power source, okay? So I want you to think of, uh, think of a power plant. Have you seen a power plant where, you know, it's a, a definitely a, a bordered off area, you know, fences that have these magnificent structures that are all connected into electricity and then they go to the power lines. Well, when the power goes, moves on to the power line, those lines are all over the United States, except Wyoming and Montana, I think. <laughs> but those lines are taking electricity to houses, and then the power line connects to a house. And then within the house, you've got more, not really power lines, but you know, cords behind the walls that will eventually connect to an outlet. And that outlet is what I plug things into, right? My toaster, my vacuum, my lights, my cameras. That's how I get electricity from the power plant to my device. But here's the deal with these power sources. The power diminishes as it transfers to the end. The power at the power plant is powerful. That's why they have some good security around that premise, right? And, and even power lines. I mean, if a power line falls during a storm or an accident, don't get out of your vehicle. Don't go near that until the authorities have, have guaranteed that the, the electricity is turned off. It's still pretty powerful, right? I mean, even, even at your outlet, if you stick something in an outlet, there's, there's some power, but it's less powerful than the power plant. If we had that amount of power going into my vacuum cleaner <laughs> that we see at a power plant, it would ruin the vacuum cleaner. So, so power diminishes as it transfers to the end. Vision's the same way. Vision diminishes as it transfers to the end of the hierarchy. Your team needs to hear and see the vision often. Many times with a vision, when I work with different organizations, Organizations share the vision at a big company-wide meeting. Maybe it's the yearly meeting in January, or maybe it's a company picnic, or there's just a big announcement. And it's probably followed up with an email, maybe clarifying some, some questions that come up. But that's not the only time to talk about the vision. It better not be the only time to talk about a vision. You gotta, you gotta keep it in front of people because if we hear it once, we forget it quickly. We actually need to hear it four, five, six times, seven times, eight times. Every time we have a meeting, we talk about the vision. Every time we have a new project, we talk about how that project connects with the vision. Well, in the chapter of this book, John talks about a few different, a few different angles here. First of all, he talks about how leaders see more and they see before others. A leader sees more and before. If a leader doesn't, see the vision, the people never will. The leader is the one who sees things and is intuitive with interactions and starts to put pieces together to figure out what, what's the vision, we, what's the path we all need to be going on in the same direction. There's three reasons why vision is important. And in this chapter, he really dives into those three reasons. He also talks about how to increase your more and before. And he talks about creating personal ownership of, of the vision by, by looking within yourself. Not only looking within yourself, but also looking behind yourself, around yourself, above yourself, and ahead of yourself. And then finally, John does a great job talking about how to paint a picture of the vision for your team. How to paint a picture. I mean, literally, we're talking about vision here. That is something visionary. That's, that's tangible. Well, how do I paint the picture to help people see what I see? Your team might be your family. Your team might be your kids. Your team might be a number of people at work. We all have a team somehow. Maybe you're planning an, a social event. That's your team, right? So question number one, what does vision look like? Like, what would you include in a visual image of your vision? Well, for me, vision is their goals, usually. They're, they're goals of some sort. And, and with any goal, we, we need to 
create a metric because you can't judge if you're meeting the goal if you don't have a metric to, to follow. So, so there might be some numbers or percentages or timelines, okay? And, and, and for me also with a vision, it, it, it's a way to, to better our world. There's usually a, a, a purpose or a passion that goes with a vision. Now, for me, me uh, personally, my vision, my, my personal vision is to share superpowers. If you haven't ever taken a look at my online program called I Have, I'm sorry, it's called You Have Superpowers, <laughs> I talk about five superpowers we all have within us, our thoughts, our emotions, our behaviors, our attitude, and our personal accountability. My vision is to share these superpowers with the world, to increase people's ownership. Because with that increased ownership, we're going to increase our success. We're going to be empowered to succeed. You see how that has a purpose and a passion to it? Now, where are the goals? Where are the numbers? Well, I created an online program. I have a goal of how many people I want to see using it and subscribing to the program. There's a metric, right? There's some numbers I can look at. The, the, I have a future book coming out related to superpowers. So what about you? What does your vision look like? What's your goal? What are some numbers you can put to it? What's the passion? What's the purpose? Okay, question number two. What have your visions been in the past? Or, or what are your visions right now? Can you define them? Before I start sharing some things there, I wanna, I wanna go into question number three is, where do you currently lack in vision? Where do you lack in your vision? Well, if you don't have a vision for anything going forward, there's a lack, right? But maybe categorize your life. Think about spiritually, socially, economically, educationally, physically. Uh, think about all those categories, I guess. Of, our, of ourselves. You know, I'm a, you might have a vision in one area, but not the other. So who do you want to be? What is it that you want to focus in on? Okay, question number four. If you have a vision, then how should you communicate it? Now, in another one of John Maxwell's books, The 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership, he talks about the law of buy-in. We need to sell the value to the team, not the dream. We're selling the value, not the dream. That's what's going to get buy-in. And, and you know, think about maybe a family vacation. If you're trying to sell it to your family, to your kids, to your spouse, you need buy-in. You need buy-in. I remember one year we were planning a trip. We were actually wanting to drive west and hit all of the fun west adventures like Mount Rushmore and the Badlands and the, you know all of that fun, the mountains, right? And as I was researching and number crunching and trying to sell the value, one of my kids says, Mom, why are we going on this trip? You get car sick. <laughs> oh, there's, there's a good value. <laughs> you know what? That's a great point. Why, why, why are we going to do this? We're going to have five in a vehicle. I will always get front seat because of my car sickness. And they're not looking forward to it. That was really hard to sell that dream. So instead... We took the kids, we flew to Las Vegas, rented a car, and drove to the Grand Canyon, much shorter distance than us starting in Iowa and driving west. Instead, my husband and I did the west trip last summer alone, just us. It was great. We still got it. They can, our adult kids can go do it on their own too, right? But you see the power? You see the power of buy-in? We need to sell the value to the team, not, not just the dream. So here's an assignment that I have for you. Talking about vision thinking about what your vision is, thinking about where your vision gaps might be, I want you to create for yourself a vision board. Have you ever done this? Have you ever created a vision board? Well, if you're watching on video, I've got mine with me right now. I have two vision boards. This one's pretty beat up, okay? And I don't even know if I have a date. Oh, it was, it was roughly 2006 or 2007. This is a huge tag board. It's got the word dream in the middle of it. And I've got things on here. I've got travel. I've got, oh, there's the, the bridge, the big bridge in London. I've seen that. Yay. Uh, there's a, a workout, a fitness person. 
I think I have a pretty good workout routine. I'm glad for that. Oh, I have the words uh, cut out of a magazine. It says professional speaker. Oh, love it. Love it. Home business. Ooh, very good. I have a lot of things on here about getting out of debt. Haven't really it's okay, right? But I'm not totally out of debt. So I haven't gotten there. I have a flower. I remember, I remember when I put this on, I don't have a green thumb, but I love the beauty of flowers. So I just wanted like garden something. And, and I do, I have a, I have a salsa garden. <laughs> it's got tomatoes, onions, and green peppers to make salsa. Okay. This is fun. This is fun. But watch this. Okay. Here's another one. This is one that I did January 11th, 2020. So it was before the lockdown and the pandemic, okay? This one's a little smaller, a little smaller, but I want to zoom in here. Okay, take a look here, close up. Take a look at the house. I just pulled these vision boards out from a behind a desk before I came in to record this podcast episode. Uh, the first thing I saw when I looked at this, mind you, it was only three and a half years ago. The first thing I saw was a picture of this house and I went, oh, this looks like the house John and I are moving into in six weeks. Holy cow. I've had this vision of this house for a long time. I forgot that I put it on a dream board or a vision board. I forgot that I forgot. But when I pull it out, wow, <laughs> look at that. Our new house looks really similar to the house in this picture. <laughs> you know, through the whole process of buying a house, my husband has kind of complained that you are getting everything you've ever wanted in this house. And I am, but I've been so specific about what it is I want because I've had a vision. I've had a vision. I want a fireplace. We, we actually put a bid in or an offer on a house that didn't have a fireplace. And after we finalized the offer, I'm like, oh, I hope we don't get it. I hope we don't get it because that I can't I can't live in a house like this in Wisconsin without a fireplace. Have you been through our winters? Hello. <laughs> but I am. I'm getting I'm getting everything I want because I've defined it ahead of time. Over three years ago, I definitely defined it. So please get the tools. And maybe it's not cutting out things from a magazine and pasting it on Tegboard. Maybe it's electronic. You're doing it in, in an app like Canva or even Microsoft Word, just putting pictures in. Whatever it is, please do it. I think the most fun part of a vision board is to get your ideas on paper, see it printed, right? And then put it away and find it three and a half years later and go, wow. Wow, I was so intentional. It's been happening. Now I got to admit, there are some things on my vision board, like you know, getting out of debt totally, that aren't, aren't happening. Or, or, or here, I, I do have some Pampered Chef goals on my vision board from 2020. I, I'm no longer on the Pampered Chef team. So, so that vision isn't, isn't happening. Maybe I failed at that vision. No, I just decided how to tweak it a little and redefine it. That's all. It's good. Well, I hope that you've had fun and you've enjoyed this session. I hope that your thoughts and habits are definitely challenged. I hope that you've paused to answer some of these questions. I hope that you're also reading the book. Remember, you're more efficient and empowered when you lean into this learning. So be great today, my friends. Next week, we're going to finish up this mastermind. We're going to talk about chapters 9 and 10 of the book, Developing the Leader Within You 2.0. So definitely read those chapters before you listen to next week's podcast and we'll have really a lot of fun wrapping it up as well. I'll see you next week.